unique find revealed in ancient Egyptian pharaoh's tomb in the Giza pyramids, Sputnik News reports today. Ancient Egyptians settled against, uh, oh, oh, in the lower reaches of the River Nile towards the Mediterranean Sea. Many believe this was over 4,500 years ago. And what remains of this great empire is here in the Great Giza Pyramids. They stand as silent testimonies to the magnificence of the advanced civilization of that culture. We still have not found explanations for all the mysteries involved with all this. Egyptian historians have made a unique find, though, inside the tomb of Pharaoh Unas, U-N-A-S. Reportedly, will be instrumental in explaining more about this ancient civilization as the documentary reveals. I admit that I never heard of Pharaoh Unas before this, but then again, I'm not an Egyptologist. Filmmaker and Egyptologist Curtis Ryan Woodside expounded on the amazing revelation on his Amazon Prime show, Egypt Through the Ages. He tells us of Pharaoh Unas. He was the ninth and last ruler of the fifth dynasty of Egypt during the Old Kingdom, who ordered a pyramid built in the city of Saqqara, the smallest of the royal buildings that still stands today. And inside were several rectangular burial tombs known as Mastabas, built for him and the royal family. But historians made an interesting discovery when they took a close look at one of them, Woodside said in 2018. He said, this is King Unas's causeway, and it leads to his pyramid, which is the first pyramid with text inside, and all of the meta mastabas for his children. Quote, in the fifth dynasty, when Pharaoh Unas was ruling Egypt, there was a famine, and this was recorded in his causeway and actually did not last that long because Unas came along and built canals. The documentary went on to reveal how the team uncovered a unique find that showed just how beneficial Unas's work was to Egypt. Woodside added, the inscriptions show vast amounts of cattle, fishing in the Nile, and Unas really turned Egypt around at that stage and he brought the country to what would continue as a very prosperous country. Now in the series, it's revealed how the Pyramid of Joshua helped uncover the real brains behind the Great Pyramid. It was crafted in 2620 BC during the Third Dynasty, and this structure is also dubbed the Step Pyramid and is the brainchild of Imhotep. He's credited as being the first to conceive of stacking mastabas on top of each other, creating a steps of a pyramid, something that later became popular among pharaohs such as Khufu. Woodside said concerning this in his series, he says he was a physician, an architect, and an advisor to Pharaoh Djoser in the Third Dynasty, when Djoser decided he wanted to change from the traditional mastabas tombs to having something a bit grander. He was an amazing man and invented so many healing methods that we still use today. He's actually one of the most important people in Egyptian history because if it was not for him we wouldn't have these pyramids we see today, is what the Egyptologist claims. Now a little bit about the uh, Pharaoh Unas or Wenus, also spelled Unis, Hellenized from Enos, Anos, Onos, was the pharaoh, ninth and last ruler of the fifth dynasty during the Old Kingdom. He reigned for 15 to 30 years. Uh, in the century, about three, uh, 2345 to 2315 BC. Uh, he was uh, succeeded by Dead Kare Isesi, who might have been uh, his father, I don't know. I'm reading from Wikipedia here. Uh, now, we remember what happened at that time. Uh, also, uh, in the area where he, they found his sarcophagus, in his uh, funerary chamber, 
of the UNES pyramid, they found um, uh, carved columns of starving, um, no, I'm sorry, in the causeway towards this pyramid. Uh, they found uh, carved columns and steles of uh, starving nomads. And they're very uh, emaciated looking. And now we know that uh, during that time, you remember what we were doing, we were looking at uh, Google Earth and Southwest Egypt, we found uh, an asteroid impact crater that was found by a geologist and that uh, that was found in 2004. In the meantime, others were searching, other scientists were searching for impact craters. They found one in 2014 in um, Iraq. And we also found volcanic lava uh, eruptions in that area. And we studied that together uh, as we looked into the, the asteroid crater and we found that there uh, were asteroid strikes all along northern um, Africa and uh, into uh, Iraq and even Iran. And right next to that impact crater was uh, volcanic lava eruptions in the middle of the desert. And of course, they looked so clean. And we mentioned, I mentioned anyway, my comment was that if they look so clean now, that means that they must be new. And even if they did erupt, who would be there to notice? Nobody. I mean, there's just absolutely nothing there except desert sand. Uh, now, I remember a couple of years ago, one of the Alaskan volcanoes was erupting and there was a flight going over it. And the only people that knew were the pilots and they reported it in that a volcano was erupting. And of course, they had to be careful of that because of uh, the ash going into their engines and stalling the engines. But otherwise, nobody knew that the volcano was erupting. Otherwise, they would have warned the flights not to fly over that area. So what happened was that because of the volcanic eruptions, climate changed. They had uh, a drought. They had, of course, famine and economic unrest, social unrest in the area. Uh, we're talking about Egypt. Uh, this is what we, we looked into. And um, that lasted basically for uh, the time of, we know, uh, the Exodus. It was about 1500 BC. Uh, we even had, you remember, the um, Joseph's brothers came from Israel into Egypt because even Israel had a tremendous famine and they had to buy grain from Egypt to, uh, you know, to survive. So even up to the time of Cleopatra, which was about, uh, was it 30 BC, something like that, uh, she wanted to have an alliance with Rome because things were so bad economically and socially in, in Egypt. Uh, people were starving and they were rebelling. And she wanted an alliance with Rome so that she would be protected. Anyway, this is what, uh, that's around the time that Unas, the Pharaoh Unas was alive. And uh, little is known of Unas' activity during his reign, which is a time of economic decline, it says here on Wikipedia. Egypt maintained trade relations with Levantine coast and Nubia. And military action may have taken place in southern Canaan. The growth and decentralization of the administration in conjunction with the lessening of the king's power continued under Unas, ultimately contributed to the collapse of the old kingdom about 200 years later. You won't believe what this is. No, it's not a pyramid. But look how clean it is. It is so clean. It's unbelievable. Unbelievably beautiful. Unbelievable. It's got a tremendously bluish tint to it as well. Let's pull out and you'll see what it is. Mm-hmm. That looks like a lava dome, doesn't it? And there's all of these things around there. And it's totally clean. Uh, this whole area is filled with them. And this is a volcanic field. 
in Egypt. And this is where we found our impact crater. Look at this. This is uh, full of full of them. Um, we're pulling out now. This is seems to be this seems to be a line of them as well. And um, it seems that after the impact, which was not just one, there were many all over uh, the area. Uh, as we know, it uh, heats up, boils up the air. That's Egypt right there. This is Sudan. This is Libya. And uh, they had a tremendous amount of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions as well, which changed the, the uh, climate of the area. And as you can see here, this whole area here up to Iraq and Iran, uh, and even parts of Israel, are still dry. And that was what took place anywhere between 5,000 to 3,000 BC uh, years ago, and uh, it impacted the economic uh, well-being people were starving, except for perhaps a few of them along the Nile uh, River, they were starving. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.